So perfectly on time. This is great because then we will have lots of time for the Q&A session. So uh, if you move to the next slide, it's just a reminder to indeed open the slide all, uh, again and uh, switch to the Q&A tab so that you can definitely ask your questions and we will uh, mm -hmm answer to them as much as possible. But uh, in the meantime, before leaving you time to do so, maybe I will start with one question, because this is a question that we had regularly when we started to communicate about this. So, so let's say that I submitted my data sources or I submitted my real world data study into uh, the catalog, but the information is not publicly available. So, uh, in that case, uh, what could be the issue there? So, I don't know if you, Stefania or Anna, would you would like to start to answer these questions? Yes, I can. I can take it. So, if you have submitted it but is not currently uh, available, is because EMA uh, is still reviewing your record. So, once your record is reviewed, um, you will receive an email notifying you whether uh, it is published or if it, it is not published, why and what you need to change in order then to be published. Perfect. So, so it means also, and maybe a follow-up question uh, is that the study can be returned, in fact, to the by the moderator, sorry, uh, to the the person who has um, is the contact point. Uh, but sometimes you may not find the reason for this. So, it, will this be happen or not? And uh, what will be the reason for it? So always when EMA returns back a record to you, there will be um, a justification. And that you can find in the revision log that uh, I showed you before, where you can see all the revisions done uh, in uh, um, a record. So there you can find the justification of EMA. Perfect. So let us know if indeed uh, these uh, answers are clear or if you need more information on the slide. Uh, let's go to the questions you've asked up to now. So uh, maybe one for you, Anna, is the catalog just for data sources used in uh, uh, studies requested by the European Medicine Agency or can other data sources be included? Um, so the catalog aims for data discoverability, so it's um, definitely not ex exclusive to data sources that we have used in the past. The um, purpose of is to find the landscape of, of useful data sources for various regulatory purposes, not EMA only, so we would actually encourage, as Stefania shown in her call for action, to to submit your data sources if you have one to, uh, to propose data sources that you know to be um, useful. So the overall answer is please uh, submit data sources to us. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, maybe link to this because you just raised that point. Anna, how should we motivate users to share data sources? Have you any views on this? Um, um, we have um, we have done our best to um, think of, of of those reasons, and frankly, this is something that we could also um, uh, ask your uh, um, help in in finding the answer. The answer from our side is we believe it's in the benefits that we have presented for data source holders. So we believe that um, um, having a bet better visibility would help. Um, the connection with uh, potential interest for the Darwin EU network, uh, again, is, is, is a point of interest, uh, hopefully for our data source holder. The um, potential, the fact that they would, could potentially be selected by EMA run studies or other regulator run studies. These are, in our view, the catch points, if you'd like, and the, the um, benefits that we offer to the data source holder. But, uh... Thanks a lot. Uh, and maybe a link to the motivation again. Another question that came is how long does it take to submit a complete data source and what competencies would be required to do so from users? So maybe when for you, Stefania, because indeed, if we can show that finally it's not so much burdensome, that's an added value to, to have your data source registered in the catalog. 
Yes, so um, it's not an easy answer. It's not an easy question to answer. It would really depend on the data source. For some data sources, and if you have, uh, as you saw, the mandatory information that you have to complete is really not a lot. It's very few. So just completing this would be enough to submit an initial record, and this would not take a lot of time because, as you saw, the mandatory it was really basic information like contact points, name, countries, etc. So at least that um, uh, you should be able quite easily to answer them. For more um, specialized questions like the quantitative data, which of course you would have to run some analysis to extract the information. Of course, we understand that um, certain skills um, and certain resources are required, or you might not have quite easily access to that information. But that is okay, because as we said, it's not mandatory. So it's okay not to have a record 100% complete. But of course, we encourage users to try to complete it as much as possible. But um, so yeah, it would depend on, on the data source, but at least to complete the mandatory fields is, is quite quick, uh, I would say. Okay, perfect. Uh, and an interesting follow-up question to this, linked also to the motivation to some extent. In your opinion, uh, are there any cons for users to submit data sources? I don't know who would like to start with this one. I, I, I can say, I mean, visibility can be <laughs> can be good, can be bad. So some people might not want to be so visible and people then to contact them. But I, I think, it, at the end is a good thing because maybe you avoid some questions that people would come to you and ask like for example do you collect genetic data because this can be easily answered by our catalog so maybe people wouldn't bother you so much but of course when you're visible maybe more people would contact you as well to request access to your data but i think overall should be a good thing people to use your data source Yes, indeed. So maybe one that I can take is uh, we, we had a questions regarding how genetic data is protected to avoid abuse and misuse. Uh, I, I will say, in fact, what's important is that the catalog is based on a list of metadata. It does not mean that the data are transferred uh, to the European Medicine Agency, for example. So, in fact, there is no reason to have additional rules to protect the data, because in fact, that should be at the uh, data source level. Uh, there is only in the metadata list, as you may have seen during the demonstration, information that indeed, yes, some genetic data are available, but that just to inform you about that possibility. And then if you want to learn more about what types of data exactly, the granularity, the number of patients uh, with uh, the relevant data and things uh, so on, then this will be via the contact the names uh, that you can get more information. But there is no reason to think that indeed having this information recorded in the catalog will be linked to abuse or misuse, because as I said, it's just linked to the metadata and not to the data itself. So hope it clarified this question and we understood it on the right way. Uh, Continuing on the, the catalogue, and then maybe we will leave uh, a little bit uh, room for the studies uh, part of the catalogue. Uh, another point is, if a data source uh, such as a registry has closed or been closed, would you prefer to have the record deleted or rather prefer the data source to still be available? Uh, maybe another question for you, Stefania. Yes, thank you, Patrice. And that's a, a very good uh, question. So, no, we wouldn't delete this uh, record. Uh, we would prefer to keep it, especially if uh, this data source is linked with studies. So, if studies have been conducted uh, using this data source, it's very helpful to, to have this record, even if it can no longer, uh, is no longer active, uh, the data collection. So, yes, we would keep all these records. Perfect. Thanks, indeed. Uh, maybe moving to the study part, and we'll, I'm sure we'll be back to the data source later. Is there any legal obligation to publish studies in the catalog if you're not an, in marketing authorization order? So I'll take it for, for me again, this one. Uh, 
yes, for some studies, there is an obligation. Uh, this obligation is, is uh, down to the marketing authorization order, and that's specifically for past post authorization studies or PIS, uh, uh, when it's according to a specific category as per the EU regulation. And I will not enter into the details there, but it's category one and two. For all the, the others, I would say there is no legal obligation, but you have understood that, in fact, the catalog is there to increase uh, transparency. Uh, so I will say that uh, it's only recommended, or I would say it's uh, only highly recommended indeed to have the studies that you will perform published in the catalog. Uh, it will be part of the good science principle for sure. Okay. Uh, let's, I'm going all the studies, uh, all the questions, sorry, coming in. So, um, I will keep some of them for, for the end. Um, uh, there is a, a question about, are there any plans to be included, uh, to, uh, to also include, sorry, medical devices, IVDs and digital health devices? Um, I'm not sure this is a clear question to us, but uh, uh, I will uh, maybe start and maybe Anna or Stephanie can complete this. I, I guess there are indeed some metadata elements in the catalog, uh, specifically linked to the data source, where you can indeed click if this information is available, specifically in the data source. But uh, can I check with you if it's correct or not my recording, uh, Anna or Stephanie? It's, it's correct indeed, yes. Okay. Yes. So this information, right? Can you expand a bit? Uh, yes. So we do have uh, in, in the section we um, we presented on what kind of data do you have in the data source. Um, among other things, we have uh, such as um, uh, mobile devices, wearer information. So that's it. It's a tick box. Do you would you have that in your data source? Would you have information on medical devices? Uh, so these are listed as individual elements that you can tick that you'd have information about and then it can be searched uh, and you could go and ahead and say uh, I'd like to see all data sources that have information on medical device and you'll get the list of those. So in, in that sense we have that information if that's what the question was aiming at then the answer would be yes. Perfect. Thanks a lot. So, so back to the data source for a few questions. Uh, Anna, maybe for you uh, again, our real world data source is encouraged to clearly describe the access conditions to the data, such as uh, the criteria to, to have access, the fees, the expected timelines for this access, and so on. Uh, indeed, we have um, quite a well-developed section on this kind of information. We do have whether there's a fee required, um, um, what are the conditions of access, uh, what kind of access would you have, would you have access further to um, um, to identifiable data. So all of these are, um, are structured in the form in the administrative section towards the end, the on, on, on the data management sort of uh, uh, section um, for and also you can use further than what we have there you can use the contact point to, of the data source to find out more specific information if you need it okay and uh, maybe a more general question also for you and I, you on the floor <laughs> there uh, are, are, we, are we going to um uh, use some standardized standardization, sorry for that, in the future, like DCAT to automate the submission of data sources. We actually are, yes. Um, so yes, this is the this is the vision there. So we're working in the background. We're working with the colleagues from EHDS, EHDS to pilot, and uh, in in the development of the DCAT AP Health standard. And we have uh, consistently provided feedback and provided um, our input in in the development of this standard so that it goes in line with what we have developed and with our needs as a catalog. So. Um, the vision indeed is to be uh, to head towards interoperability with the EHDS standard and in and data sources in general. Oh, yeah. Yes. Perfect. And um, maybe another one that I will keep for myself. So is the aim of the catalog to also capture non-European data sources? And if yes, in which context? 
So definitely, yes, you may have seen in some of the examples presented today that they were more than just EU or European data sources used. So if you use, for example, a US or a Canadian or an Asian data sources in one of your studies, I think it's important to also have this source included in the data source catalog because you understood that one of the key new functionality of these catalogs is the link between the data source in one side and uh, the studies on the other side. So definitely, yes. You can also decide upfront to register the data source uh, for all the reasons when we were talking about the pros and cons of doing so that have been discussed up to now. So yes, the focus is mostly on EU first, but indeed uh, feel free if you think it's a valuable sources and you have used also these sources in studies in addition to EU sources uh, to include also these sources in the catalog of data sources. So uh, yes, as a short answer. Uh, maybe moving back to uh, the study part, um, some fields of the new catalog uh, regarding the studies are not mandatory anymore. So I think it's referred to what was before in the EU pass register. There are some examples given uh, in the questions such as the funding, the study drug, the medical condition, the main objective, the outcomes, the data analysis plan, uh, quite a long list then, uh, but uh, they are very relevant information. How can that uh, be changed? Anna, maybe for you. Yeah, I can take this one. Um, we have, uh, it, it was indeed um, intentional. Uh, what we have done in the migration from the EU pass to the new catalog is to expand uh, the data elements that are collected and to expand a little the scope. We're looking at a broader picture. And when we do so, it means that things like the kit could be studies that do not have uh, a drug. Perhaps it's just a um, disease registry without a particular drug. So then we have removed the mandatory condition of, of that, uh, for example. So we went a little broader with um, not necessarily mandating everything technically speaking, but what we do is to move the quality check to a manual level. So uh, once this is submitted, study by study, we have a, a revision uh, ongoing in-house that will look on the information that could be better submitted and ask for more uh, on a case-by-case -case basis, more, uh, more granular, more better suited to each individual study. Yes, thank you. Very clear answer. An important point is that we'll have also Q&A uh, in the catalog, so you can also find this kind of information, right? Uh, and I would say we will definitely continue to update this information so that hopefully it covers all the, possi the possible cases. Um, Back to you, Anna, sorry again, uh, because apparently there is a question saying that, Anna, uh, you mentioned that data sources could be selected or picked up for EU studies. Uh, could you elaborate or give an example of this? Not necessarily. I mean, um, it's a principle. It's, it was more of a principle kind of um, uh, statement because we, we would use our own catalog for, for um, looking at various research questions, us or other regulators. Um, hence, it opens a possibility in that direction. I don't necessarily have details as this is like a case by case kind of situation, um, perhaps in um, when looking from the Darwin perspective, perhaps when looking from um, other questions we get from our committees. So it was more of a process uh, integration of, uh, of these tools with our processes uh, statement than necessarily targeting a particular situation um, as such. Okay, perfect. And, uh... The next one, which is linked to the institution catalog, uh, the, uh, so the, an additional uh, sheet in the catalog. So the institution catalog as a data source owned by institution field. Uh, is there a way to record data sources access by the institution, not just ownership through a license? Um, we did consider that, yes. We haven't really implemented technically, not just yet. It gets 
a little complicated in terms of data model uh, uh, and of concepts. We could do that in the future, but at the moment we we, we stick to um, this is the data owner, this is the data source. Uh, we are aware of that uh, level of intricacy and, and uh, um, that it could be useful in the future to, to find a good architecture that captures this information, but at the moment we do not. Okay. So there are quite few questions also, I try to regroup them, uh, linked to very specific aspects. Uh, one is a suggestion to improve the forms to include an information box for terms that may not be well known uh, directly in each question. So the same model as when filing the task form, interesting <laughs> uh, linked. Uh, so, would this something that we can potentially uh, consider, Anna? Maybe easily, yes, yes, and it, it's it's uh, it's part of how we uh, we we plan to to go forward. We have already put as much as we as we uh, knew at this stage, but indeed. I, I, we believe that what's going to happen is in the process of validation, it will be easier for us to understand wh which exactly data elements pose difficulties to people sending data to us that are not necessarily clear. And, and using that information, we'll be able to uh, better um, to, to improve the help that we give to our users. So in the following months, I, I expect that that part will, uh, will improve uh, with having a system live uh, going forward. Yes, perfect. And maybe just because you are, uh, it's another one for you, and then I move to Stephanie, yeah, but one, one additional one for you, Anna, uh, to find it on safety events for particular medicines or combination of medicines. Can you search for a medicine name or two medicines name and or a safety event for all the catalogs and how are safety events coded? What's the ontology behind it? Um, we are able to search for more than one, yes. Uh, the catalog will look for the keywords that you have asked for. Um, it's worth going f saying that um, um, we will refine all the search. So for now, we give a very powerful tool, which is the search bar that looks everywhere in a um, very comprehensive way. But what we would really like to hear is um, well detailed cases of search that it doesn't they're not covered right now and we should be implementing them so uh, if you feel like something it doesn't quite work in your search as you would like it to we would very much appreciate if you'd send us the whole description of what you are trying to do and you are not able to so that we can take it further and improve our catalogs with uh, with that yes, so maybe the next one for you, Stefan. Yeah, I, I noticed, not myself, but that's the person asking the question, that some sections are not recent in the exported files, such as the list of CDs linked to a data source or the CDM mapping details. Is this on purpose? Uh, I guess this person meant present, not recent. Um, so. I think no, it's not on purpose. We have noticed and uh, we will uh, further improve it. So as Anna mentioned, there we have some release notes with all the improvements and the bugs that we fix. Uh, um, so we will, it's one of the things that we need to further refine. But I believe most of the data are there, but indeed some of the data are missing from the exported Excel. That's because it's uh, it's the linked data. So it needs, uh, it needs some further refinement, but uh, yeah, we will export everything. Perfect, yes. Uh, maybe an additional one for you, Stefania. Are the data available in the catalog accessible also for pharmaceutical companies? That's an easy one, right? The data are accessible to anyone. You don't need to log in to view the data. As I showed you, I was not logged in for the whole first part of my demo, so anyone can, can view the data. The, uh, what you have extra when you log in is just to submit data. And again, anyone with creating an EU login account can submit data. So basically no real restriction for anyone. Yes. And um, maybe a few questions regarding uh, the practicalities. So uh, um, 
for example, one question is about the timing when the study will be available at public level if no comments uh, in, in the registration. So I don't know, Anna, you have a, a view on this? Uh, yeah, so the timelines of revision, right, of validation uh, that we set out for ourselves. I think that's the question, if I got it yeah. correctly. Um, so, yes, we have set up, we have put um, in our processes, we have set out a, a five working days a week for a revision of an incoming study. And we'll take it from there. We think that's feasible but, um, based on our past experience. But as, as time goes, we will um, adjust and, and see if it needs to be shorter or longer. And, and so on. But that's our intention at the moment. Okay. And, and I can were... just uh, add because yes. now there is a bit of a backlog because uh, N7 and EU pass were not active. So there might be some delay if you have submitted an entry, it might be more than five days, but that's because we have quite a big backlog of uh, of entries that we need to, to validate uh, and update. So please bear with us, but we will validate yes. everything. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so uh, another question which is linked to uh, uh, the ownership of uh, specific studies and the need to switch from uh, one person to another one. So how can this be managed? Uh, and I will link to this additional question such as I want to change the authorship of my institution, but I don't know where. And also I try to add my colleague as a co-author to a study and receive the neuro message. Uh, so, so how can this be done, in fact, when it comes to, indeed, uh, more people on institution switch? Uh, so can, can it, uh, I saw this in the demo. So when where you have uh, your record, so on the top, you have some different tabs. So where it says co-author, you can go there and add the other person's email. Although you need to make sure that the other person has an EU login account and has logged into the catalog, so they have like an active account, and then you will be able, able to share the uh, ownership and both change the record. At the moment, we don't have the functionality of um, giving complete ownership to another person and for you to be removed. Uh, but um, we will. Um, it's one of the foreseen changes that we will impl implement uh, in the future, the change of ownership. But for sure, you can um, amend, uh, not amend, uh, you can share the ownership with another person uh, if they have a, a login account. Uh, if you have further issues, just contact us uh, by the service desk and we will be able to, to look into this specific issue. So, as a key important prerequisite is indeed to have this uh, login account. Yeah. But is the creation, uh, the account creation needed only to upload to these sources, uh, but also to search the catalog? No, no. Yeah, no, I said so. You're searching the catalog without being logged in. So you can search the catalog. The search functionality is exactly the same, doesn't change with logging in. Logging in is just for submitting new data and edit your data. Doesn't provide any more functionalities than that. Okay, great. And maybe an additional question. We're closer to the end, which is nice. We had a lot of questions. So uh, can the catalog form uh, integrate the possibility to request to the data holder the relevant data uh, or this will always be made separately integration of the request could be useful since the identification of the user is already made so i think it's a link between indeed when you have a data source used for example in a study uh, and uh, then you have a data source uh, I, I will say the, the catalog itself does not uh, request the information the data order to register uh, this information, but I think that you can indeed use this uh, additional element to say that you registered your study to maybe ask the data order to also register their data source so that you can have the link between the two. So hope I answered to, you, to the questions. Uh, there is another one, which is also how will the new catalog be integrated into the European health data space? Will there be a separate obligation to report study data into EHDS or will this be covered by the catalog? So I don't know who wants to take it, Anna, maybe? Yes, I can take it. Um, we're working with uh, with our EHDS colleagues to 
to come to a process that is streamlined, that is that makes sense, that uh, uh, doesn't uh, add additional burdens on the data source holders out there. Um, at the moment, EHDS catalog is still in its inception phase, so we can't quite say with certainty um, a lot about it. But what we can say is that we uh, we are working towards have this interoperability going when it goes live. So the intention is there to uh, to keep the automated parts wherever possible. It's worth also t keeping in mind that it might be th that there are um, uh, different purposes to this catalog, that our catalogs has a set of elements that are specific to regulatory pro medicine regulation. And it might just be that those set of data elements are not necessarily of interest in the EHDS. So it could be uh, that, the, as I said, at least early days, but it could be that the system might work with a core set of data elements, core set for EHDS, core set for our catalog, for other national catalogs that are in line throughout the system, whereas these additional information might need to be separately provided. So it is just a guess, but it's as good as it, we have it at the moment. It's works in progress anyway. So yeah. uh, there were two questions which are linked and uh, uh, it's an easy answer to this. Where uh, can we find the recording of the session and when will this live stream be published online? So yes, the recording will be available on the event page in a few weeks after the seminar and slides will also be made available in the coming days. So you will have all the information on the EMA website. Maybe just a last question, uh, and I will like to give it to you, Paolo. Maybe uh, how many people will be required to maintain, update the catalog? Uh, so, so we can understand this question as being very uh, EMA focused because indeed we are maintaining and updating the catalog to some extent, uh, but we could also uh, see this as uh, maintaining and updating the catalog for everyone who has entered in fact, the relevant information, because as you've seen, uh, we definitely need to have data in, but also to have the right and accurate information into it. So updates will be uh, regularly asked. So I don't know, Paolo, if you want to uh, emphasize one and the other. So um, for the maintenance of the catalog, I mean, it's uh, early to say. At the moment, we have a, a group of colleagues that are working on it and are maintaining the data. So at the moment, it's uh, too early to give, uh, to give an answer. Uh, we just go live and we need a little bit of uh, uh, routine work because at the moment, as uh, we were discussing earlier, for example, we are still uh, relinking, the, relinking the user with the records. We are uh, uh, approving and reviewing some backlog for the study. So there is, is the, the situation is not yet stable enough to give an answer. So we will need to have a uh, few weeks of work uh, before being able to... Um, uh, to fully understand uh, this uh, this one, and uh, and Patrice, the other question was uh, indeed it, it, because you could read that question as being also related to uh, the, uh, the time. How many people will be required to maintain and update the catalog when it comes to a specific study or data source, not when it comes to the EMA search? Yes, that is basically uh, from the um, company-wise, let's say, yeah. so more than, than EMEA. Many, that, that I think is, <laughs> is difficult for me to assess. Uh, I think depends on the, uh, on the process that the various company has in order to maintain this record, to, uh, to amend the, the studies information, uh, etc. So. I don't think that I can reply for, for them. Yes, indeed, a bit challenging, but we do not expect to have a lot of people, in fact, that needs to be involved uh, anyway to maintain and update this catalog, except if you have a lot of studies or a lot of different data sources that you, you have to enter. I see that we are six minutes uh, before closing the webinar. So uh, maybe I will give you the floor back 
Paolo for the closing remarks. Thank you, Patrice. So, colleagues, um, many thanks for uh, attending this uh, this workshop. I hope it was uh, 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 instructive and helpful. I would like to remind and to stress again uh, the importance for uh, um, for you, for all of you, to contribute to the content of the catalog, to fill the information, to introduce uh, new data sources, new institution, uh, in order to make the catalog really, really valuable in order to help every researcher and company to discover new data sources that can be helpful for studies. Um, uh, as, as, I was, as it was mentioned already, the first step is creating the EU login account. As soon as you have done that, I think that the, the remaining steps are relatively easy because uh, uh, the metadata fields that you need to submit in the forms, that can be studies, can be data sources, uh, should be relatively also easy for you. So uh, really, really, we are welcoming your contribution. Um, then, next slide. So, uh, with regards to the next step, uh, we are going to do a survey to collect feedback on the usability of the real world data catalogs. So, please fill that uh, form uh, as soon as you get it, as soon as you have the chance, because all your uh, feedback is important. Uh, we will, for example, always uh, continuously update the Q&A, probably all the questions or at least the most uh, relevant one that we answer today. We are going also to include the Q&A with the answers, so to make it more uh, we are going to develop that uh, document more and more. Um, we are trying to uh, engage more and more uh, on a daily basis with uh, stakeholders in order to populate the catalog. So we will review the information that you sent to us. We will provide you comment. We will try to identify new data sources. Uh, and that is going to be a continuous work for the months and years to come. Uh, we are going to revise. We have. Um, we are going to revise the, the the good practice guide, and that is expected for uh, next quarter this year. And we are releasing on a monthly basis improvement, box fixing, and announcement. We are trying to uh, integrate also with uh, the EMEA website uh, before the end of the year. Uh, hopefully, we will, uh, will, it will be, uh, we will be able to do that. Uh, and therefore, you will be able to see, for example, in the medicine uh, page uh, in the web website, the link to the relevant studies published in the uh, catalog. And also, we will uh, continue to work towards uh, fostering interoperability with other system that uh, uh, may be valuable. And I think that is the last slide. So um, if you have any further question, I will uh, remind you to uh, contact us via the service desk. That is at the moment the preferred channel because we can track the question, we can prioritize the question, and uh, we are sure that uh, we don't lose uh, any of your feedback or question that uh, you provide to us. So for the moment, I'll thank you. I'll thanks all uh, the participants. I'll thank my co-chair, Patrice, and uh, the speakers, and uh, I wish you a very nice day. Many thanks.